Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Kylie. I'm currently a PhD student at University of Maryland. And today we're going to be talking about a really useful topic in astronomy. Whenever you deal with data in astronomy research, you often have to mess with what's called FITS files. So FITS is just a type of data, like a JPEG or a GIF, like those kinds of things. And it stores data for us. And there's some unique aspects about it that we're going to be going over today. So I'll show you how to kind of manipulate and get information from FITS files in Python. And then I'll show you some tools that I use to like view data in FITS files very easily that isn't coding related. So let's get started. So I opened up a Jupyter notebook here uh, so I can code very easily for us. So let's start out with this first general page. So generally when you're handling FITS files, you'll want to use AstroPy. So make sure you have the AstroPy module imported and downloaded and stuff installed. You can do like pip install AstroPy or other things like that. Conda probably has an install for AstroPy. But generally, if you have AstroPy installed, then you have access to this FITS handling system here. And um, I picked and chose, picked and choose some of the useful things from here. Um, but this is the general website that really in depth describes the different ways you can handle FITS files. So yes, it's just in the AstroPy documentation, as you can see in the website up here. Anyway, let's uh, let's get started with what I wrote down here. So generally, you'll want to first import FITS from masterpy.io. And then I have a file here, a FITS file to uh, use as an example today. So I generally put the location of the file here. So I opened up the stupid notebook within the directory that has this FITS file. So there's no long path, but generally you'll have some like users slash whatever your username is slash, I don't know, data slash whatever. It, it'll, it'll be this long kind of path there to, whatever, to wherever your FITS file is, unless your, you know, your Jupyter notebook is also in the same uh, folder slash directory. So that's what this is. And then to open up this file to kind of import it into your code, you do fits.open and then the file location here. And I just named it HDUL here. And then with this object here, you can do lots of different things with that. So uh, first of all, I'm going to run this top cell and then the next cell. Uh, will give us some information. As you can see here, I already practice ran it <laughs> ahead of time to make sure it worked. So yeah, so it'll give us information about this file here. Different FITS files might have different, what are called different HDUs. Different people call it different things, I think. So this one only has um, one here, which is indexed as zero because Python starts ind indexing as zero. But I've worked with ones that have one, two, three, sometimes four different ones here. And so each of those will be represented with an index here. So um, HDUL0 or HDUL1, et cetera. Those will be each of these different lines here if there were multiple lines. But for now, we'll just use HDUL0 because there's only one. And then there's a name for it, primary and version and a type. So HDU, it's the primary one, which means it has all the data. And then it has some, I don't know what cards are, but it the important thing here is it gives the dimensions of your data here. So this particular FITS file holds a data cube, which is why there are three dimensions here. This data cube is an IFU uh, data. So what's an IFU? Well, it's basically like a camera that also takes spectra. So you get like 2D information, like a picture gives you in like 2D spatial information, but each of those pixels holds a spectrum of whatever that object is. And so that means it's like a data cube, like there's an extra dimension of the spectral wavelength data. And so that's why we have the three dimensions here and it gives the different values for the number of points um, in each of these dimensions here. And then it gives the format, which is a float because it's just numbers. Yep. Yep, so this is kind of useful to kind of see which HDU your data is in. For example, you might not know if it's zero or one or two or whatever, so you can check it using info. Next, how do we actually access this data? Well, 
FITS files generally have two different types of data in them. There's a header and then there's the actual numbers, which is the data here. So the header here gives you a lot of the information of like uh, metadata, like when was the data taken? Where was it taken? What is the RA and deck of the object, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll run this and we can kind of see, uh, I have to print it, kind of see like what data is here. So it's kind of messy when it prints it here, unfortunately. Let's see. So it gives you the bit of the pixels, which is 64 because it was a float 64, as you can see up here. Gives you the number of the axes, which is three, as we um, saw before. Gives you the different dimensions, right? The different dimensions of those ax uh, axes. And then lots of different things like like when the exposure began, when the exposure ended, the shutter open duration, binning, lots of different like uh, stuff that has to do with the detector, like the gain and stuff. Yeah, so there was a CCD, so the CCD output stuff and things like that. Yeah, there's lots of stuff here. A lot. I'm not going to go over everything. But as you can see, it's a lot of metadata, which is data about data. So you might need to know some of these things, and they'll be... Uh, usually located in the FITS header. And then let's look at the data itself. So it's not going to show much here because Jupyter Notebook kind of cuts it off if it's too long, right, with these these ellipses. So anyway, you can see that it's a three-dimensional array because there's three sets of brackets here, right? That's kind of how, how NumPy arrays are shown. So yeah, so this is the data, and obviously... Once you have the data in a variable, you can play with it in whatever which ways you'd like. But it might be kind of annoying to code all that yourself, which is why I'm going to show you some useful tools to showcase your data. Because oftentimes your data is an image or a spectrum, something like that. And you want to actually view it without, you know, having to code everything yourself. So we're going to jump right into that. So the first one I'm going to show you is, is DS9. So DS9 is a program you can download, it'll run on your computer, and you can import a file. I've already imported a file here, which is the same exact file that I had before, but I'll just demonstrate. So you can click file here, click open, and then choose the file from your file system. And right here, conveniently, you can also view the header. Click on the header and it'll, it'll pop up the header for you. Sure, is it sharing that? No, it's not. So I'll go ahead and share that. Yeah, so it very conveniently showcases the header in a very easy way to view, unlike in the Jupyter Notebook, like the coding version. So here you can easily see the different parameters and scroll down and find the one that you need, etc. Yep. Let's go back. Yeah, so easily open and uh, view the header and stuff. And some good things you can play around with here are, for example, the scale. So we're going to have it at Z scale, but you can do min max, see it differently, histogram, et cetera, Z scale. It's playing around with this linear log power, et cetera. You can see the scale changes in the image. How the image looks. Let me zoom in. Zoom. Yep. And you can also click and drag on this color bar at the bottom to change the scale uh, to whatever you wish it to be as well. And as you see, as, as I drag my cursor around this, the numbers in the top kind of change. So it tells you like the, the location of whatever pixel it is, as well as the physical value of it, which is kind of nice. Then also has the file name and the object name. And so one other thing that I'd like to kind of talk about is you can do what are called regions. Um, I think I need to do edit top region, and then I can click and drag and make a region like this. And drag it around. And you can do a lot of things with this region. For example, double click that. If you double click it, a little window will pop up. Uh, let's actually just share my whole screen because this is kind of annoying. So a little window will pop up 
that shows like where you can define the center of the image and also the radius or not the image of the region and also the radius of it. And then you can choose different units here for these values. Uh, but what else you can do is you can do plot 3D. So if you have three-dimensional data like this, where it's just 2D spatial, and then the third dimension is the wavelength, you can do plot 3D and it'll give you uh, a combined spectra of all of those pixels in that region. So if you shrink the, the region, you can get like individual pixels, for example, and you can see how that changed here. If I drag this around, you can see this data change as I examine different areas of the sky. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so that's DS9. We're going to close this. This is a galaxy, by the way, that I've been studying. And we're going to learn about QFITS first. So I didn't really know about QFITS until very recently. And it's just another way to view 3D kind of FITS data. So one thing I noticed is you can also change, you can do similarly to DS9, change the different ways you view the data. So logarithmic, linear, et cetera, square root. I'm going to keep it all logarithmic. And you can also change where in the wavelength range. So here, on this is the wavelength range. You can change where you're looking at in terms of this image that you're seeing here. So if I drag this bar at the top, you can see how the image changes. And there are certain parts where it gets much brighter. So like here, for example. So this is where kind of like a large emission line exists let's see it get more brighter here too yep so the emission from this particular wavelength is very very high so you can see if i hover my cursor over some of these individual pixels you'll see so like if i hover over this very bright part in the center you can see in this bottom part of of the qfits view you can see that the spectrum goes up a lot and so we're kind of viewing that slice of the spectrum, and it's particularly bright there. Yeah. Yep. So you can very easily drag your drag your cursor around here and see different different areas of the spectrum. You don't have to create a region like you did in DS9 and set up that three D plot. So like it's a little bit more convenient in that sense, where you can just you know move your cursor around and it automatically showcase that spectrum. Um, what it looks like here at the bottom here. You can change this to like different um, radii as well. So like circular, for example, um, and it'll give you a small radius of it. You can increase it, decrease it, et cetera. Yep. So I haven't really played around with this that much, but this is something I learned about recently and might be useful for you, which is why I chose to also include it in this video. All right, that was it for now. I hope that was helpful. There were some suggestions, other suggestions from you also, like hopefully I can get to those and we'll slowly like build up our knowledge about this stuff together. Uh, so I'll see you next time.